Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me in this live video chat where you can ask questions and I'll do my best to answer them. I am Ginger Gentile, the director of the Erasing Family documentary. And I have some exciting updates to share with you. And um, I first wanted to start with saying, wow, uh, we have an incredible update to share. Our talk, Divorce a la Facebook, and how parents are using social, social media to try their cases in the court of public opinion, how they're using it to badmouth the other parent, and, but also how children are using this to speak out against family court travesties and to reunite with lost loved ones, was accepted into the South by Southwest Conference, and we can announce that today. Um, I'm sharing the link right now. And uh, thank you for all of the people who voted uh, for our talk. Um, we're going to be taking this issue to the biggest change makers in the technology and artistic field. And they're all at the South by Southwest Conference, which is in March in Austin, Texas. So we are super excited. We're making more big announcements this week. Um, behind the scenes, we have been talking with some major celebrities in Hollywood to support the Erasing Family film. Hopefully we'll have some news soon. And we're moving towards the premiere date. So we still don't have it yet, but uh, we just submitted to the Sundance Film Festival and also the Slam Dance Film Festival, and we'll be submitting to the Tribeca Film Festival in New York, the South by Southwest Film Festival, which would be great because we're getting a talk there, the True False Film Festival, and the Berlin Film Festival. And we would love to submit to more festivals. Um, each festival we submit to is expensive. It can be more than $100 per submission. So that is why it is so important to help us finish the film, cross the finishing line, and make a tax-deductible donation at erasingfamily.org. Or if there's a particular festival that you want us to participate in, ask for us to get a fee waiver, which means we don't have to pay to uh, submit the film. Or um, you can give us that money to submit to that festival if you want, if it's very important to you. But it's very easy to spend ten thousand dollars submitting to ten, you know a hundred film festivals. So we need to be careful with that. So Rick Tobin just say congratulations. I voted for you in the South by Southwest Film Festival. Uh, yeah, it's it's amazing, and thank you for all those who voted. I think we got a lot of votes because so many families are affected by this issue, and a lot of people went through the steps, and there are a lot of steps to vote for the panel picker. Um, it wasn't an easy process. It took more than 10 minutes probably. So thank you, Rick Tobin. Thank you to everyone, everybody else who voted for us. Um, now, we are gonna be finishing the film, right? And that means the credits will at one point be closed. That means there'll be no more chance to get your name in the film. You will always be able to make a donation so we can continue our educational work. But if you want your name in the credit, if you want a dedication to your child, we have to receive that by November 5th. And it's super easy. It's tax deductible. You can donate by credit card. You can donate by check. If you want to donate by check, just email us. But more importantly, if you know of somebody who can make a donation of $500 or more, we are more than happy to give them a presentation over the phone, show them the trailer. We have a 20-page prospectus. Um, just email us and let us know if it's somebody, and it doesn't have to be an affected parent. A lot of people who support this film are happily married with no kids, but they are touched by the stories we are trying to tell, or a friend comes to them and says, Please support this cause. It's important to me. It's one of the last chances I have to possibly see my children. So we are more than happy to talk to people. Also, I want to give a big shout out to Elvin Serrano, who's the father of Laura. Laura has a great Facebook page. Well, not great. It's horrible. Um, called Free Laura. And she is fighting to see her dad. She used to have 50-50 custody with her dad and her mom. And the judge took that away. And Laura, at the age of 15, is live blogging how her mother is blocking her from talking to her father and pleading directly to the judge. And it's all Laura. Elvin has nothing to do with this. He unfortunately can't talk to her due to a restraining order. Lots of us have been there. And um, so a big shout out to Elvin and also Elvin along with Lisa Carl of Northern New Jersey, they are going to be putting on a fundraiser. So Elvin and Lisa, they both donated $1,000 a piece, a piece uh, to become associate producers of the film. So they'll be credited as associate producers on the film. Also, if you're into 
movies on our on the IMDB page. That's the Internet Movie Database page. So that's super exciting. And they have also gone together and said, we're going to do more. We are going to reach out to friends and family in northern New Jersey and hold a fundraising event so we can get even more donations for the Erasing Family film to not only get done, but also to have an impact campaign, which means press, PR, curriculum packets, getting into schools in front of legislative um, members, politicians, educators, police departments, uh, child protective services, everyone who has a stake in this issue. Uh, Lauren is now 16. I'm hoping that you two are reunited soon. Um, so again, for those of you who just joined us, we are very fortunate to say that um, we are um that we are we would have just been accepted to the south by southwest film festival i'm going to um put the link here not film festival sorry the conference and we are going to be urging the tech people in the crowd to think of ways to educate the users of social media the users of facebook twitter instagram but especially facebook on how to think before they post and to create posts that are made out of kindness and not bad mouthing your ex. And I know a lot of you are attacked on social media, but I know some of the people who follow Racing Family do that too. And that brings us into the topic of today, which is brainwashed erased children. And this is a very hard topic uh, to talk about. It's a very hard topic. And I, I in part have not really reached on this topic because it's one of those topics that doesn't have an easy solution. And a lot of parents come to me saying like, what's the magic phrase or the magic thing to do so my kid will snap out of it and come back. And um, the, the quick answer is there is no magic solution. And you might do everything right and never reunite with your child. And that is the first thing that you need to accept, that you need to do the best you can, but your best might not work. And that's how powerful and important this problem is. So to take a step back and to always ask yourself how you can do better, but not blaming yourself. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about, and if you have any questions or comments, please uh, write it in, in, um, in the comment bar and I'll get to the questions as soon as possible. So what are some things that I've learned from talking to people and talking to reunited families and erased children? Um, the first big distinction is that there's two types of erased kids. This comes from Ryan Thomas, not from me. There are the hostage children, and these are children who really want to see their parent and are prevented from doing so um, because they're physically prevented or because they are threatened. So you talk to your dad, I will take away your car, you talk to your mom, and I will take away your college money, um, or I will hit you. Um, or in the case of Laura, um, her mother says, I will take away your bed. You talk to your dad, I will remove your bed and you'll have to sleep on the floor. So these children often, as soon as they turn 18 or within a week of turning 18 or two weeks, uh, move in with their erased parent very quickly because it was never a question of them not liking that parent or being brainwashed but being prevented or scared to see them. And unfortunately, that's not the case. And, and most people, when they outside looking at this problem, think that all kids are like that, which is you get the famous, I have addressed this in another video, wait till your kids are 18 and they'll snap out of it and come find you. And, and unfortunately, that doesn't always happen. So the first trick is to realize that um, These children, when they say, I hate you, I dislike you, you're horrible, you're not my dad, you're not my mom, you're my egg donor, you're my sperm donor, we're not family, it's just blood and DNA, that they are not speaking from their own words, that these words have been implanted in their brain. And it's very important, the first step is the same way that we would treat a kidnapping victim, a victim of Stockholm Syndrome, a person who's in an abusive relationship to not get angry at these words. To not get angry if our child behaves that way. This is the first big step and it's very hard because part of what you want to do as a parent is to instill it's important to be polite and respectful and you can't parent in this way when you have a brainwashed child. 
But the most important thing is to not get angry or upset. The second thing is to abandon your hope that the child will one day know the truth, to realize what happened, to accept that what they said to you is wrong or mean or rude, or to apologize to you. And I've had a lot of parents say, I can't deal with this until they apologize for what they did to me. I can't have anything to do with them. You always need to show love and be open like a drug addict. You can put limits on what that behavior is. Like a drug addict, you can say, you can't do drugs in my home. You can't steal from me. But you can't say, until you get clean, I can't talk to you. That doesn't work. I mean, anyone who knows with addiction knows that there's relapses. And we're dealing with the same thing. And this is very hard to abandon that notion of getting an apology of the child realizing what they did or accepting your narrative or wanting to look, look at facts. Facts will not sway an erased child who's brainwashed. Lo said, I cannot listen to my anxiety hitting me, gotta go. Yeah, so this is very important to realize that you need to get help, especially Flo, be before you go because you wanna in be involved in advocacy. If me talking about this sends you an, an anxiety attack, it's best not to be a public spokes spokesperson for this cause. And I've talked about this. You need to take care of yourself first. Um, let me see. Kathy Woods said, very true. Mary Beth Perio McCary. I hate when all the people said, wait till he's 18. I'm missing all this time with my son now. He's 18 and I know he feels it's easier to disagree with them. I can't text or call because they blocked me and it's 10 minutes from me and I haven't seen him since March. I'm so sorry for this, Mary Beth. It's, 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 it's horrible, it's tragic, and it's like mourning a death. And what you need to do right now, and this is very hard, hold me one second, I'm gonna close my door. Now I'm back, is to know that your child is trapped and you are missing a lot of things and that's tragic. And when you can't talk to your child and these feelings boil up, one thing that you can try, and every tip I'm giving, they're not magic solutions and they may not work. So please take everything I say with a grain of salt. Give yourself some time once a month, once a week, once a day, five minutes, put on some music that you and your child enjoy together or was a favorite band that you both like, and listen to it and send feelings of love. They will reach your child even if they don't realize it consciously. And it's a way for you to think about that child in a controlled way so you're not being triggered by every time you see a child the same age. But you're sending positive emotions and not I'm upset that I can't see you, I'm missing you, but I love you. Just, just say like a mantra for I love you for five minutes, once a day, once a week, once a month, however much you can. For some people, once a month is incredibly hard. But I, I'm a true believer that those messages and those calming things can have a big impact on someone's psyche, even if you can't communicate with them. Um, Amy Yates Maloney says, my daughter is 20 now, still nothing moving forward for the broken relationship. She's now alienated her father and lives with her soon-to-be stepmother. Um, I'm so sorry to hear this, Amy. Again, and I wish that there was some magic bullet to, that I could tell you. But this kind of brings us into, so I've talked about a few tips, which is that their words are not their own, that they feel the need that this is what they have to do to have the love of the other parent, or that they believe it, and not to get angry when they say horrible, rude things or don't talk to you. The same way you wouldn't get sick, at, mad at a child who throws up because they have an illness, right? need to protect and abandon the need that one day they'll realize the truth. And I, I, I remember one case of a child who reunited with her father at the age of 21, and she was told that her father had kidnapped her. This wasn't true. And they began to rebuild this relationship and spend a lot of time together, make up for lost time. It was all very happy. And one day he asked, what do you think of me? And she said, you're my kidnapper. And the reason why I say this 
is because it might occur a very long time if she can ever abandon my dad kidnapped me. But she was able to have a relationship with him despite that and love him. So the relationship and the love comes first and the truth comes later if it comes at all. And a lot of kids say, I don't want to hear about the past. I just want to focus on the future. It's too stressful, especially if they are trying to maintain a relationship with both you and the other person. If a child is being, and this is my other tip, if a child is being manipulated and brainwashed, the only way that you'll be able to come through is if you're able to protect that child. If you're able to protect them from that abusive force, emotionally protect them, physically protect them, and financially protect them. And you, that is something that you can work on and that is within your control is to be the healthiest, happiest you can be. So that when you do see your child, you're able to provide that love and support that they need. Because if you are broken, if you're unable to be happy, to show love and kindness and help them, you're leaving them with no choice but to go back to the other parent. And this is really important because in a lot of cases I've seen, the erased parent will often get a few seconds to turn their child back to them. And that is because sometimes these encounters are chance encounters. You're at the same event together. A family member, there's a funeral and you're both there. A party and you're both there. You run into each other at the supermarket. And the parents who are able to remain calm and smiling and just inquire about their day and show love have a better chance of parents who break down crying, who are broken, or begin to badmouth the other parent. And that brings me into my last thing where it's very important, it's very tempting to say, my ex is evil for doing this. This is the worst form of evil. They're horrible. They're a narc. That's something I hear all the time. Um, narcissists, you're diagnosing them, you know, in, in, in absentia without a psychology degree. And all you're doing is showing your child that they have two parents who badmouth each other. They have two parents who are always fighting and acting immature. And that is why it's so important to never, ever, ever talk about your ex in any negative way. And if you can't do that, don't talk about them. I've done a lot of videos about this. And if you do talk with them, it has to be something positive. And the other day, I saw a woman on Facebook who's an erased mom. She gets to see her kids occasionally, and her children had done an art project. And someone commented, what a really cool idea. And she goes, thanks. It was my ex's idea. He's super creative, and my kids are creative too, just like their dad. And knowing her story, the internal strength to say something on Facebook Thanks, it was my ex's ideas, he's creative, and my kids are creative just like their dad. Talk about fortitude and talk about being from a strong place. And then the kids will eventually see, wow, mom always talks great about dad. Dad always talks bad about mom. And it's by showing, not telling, that they'll eventually come back. So I'm going to read some comments because that's basically what I had to say. And as I said in the beginning, there is no magic bullet. You can do all of this and you might not reunite with your children. Um, and that is why the Erasing Family documentary and other forms of outreach are so important because if you reach out to your child in any way, they're going to reject it. So society needs to send a message. Other people in their lives need to send a message that this isn't okay. And I've seen cases where it's the psychologist who says, dude, you need to talk to your dad and find him. Um, a lot of the first loves say, dude, you got to talk to your mom. That's weird that you don't talk. I don't want to be with a woman who doesn't talk to her mom. Crazy town. Um, so like, those are what the things we need to encourage. Colleen A. Bushnell said, let them guide. Consider every interaction and get from them to you on their terms. That's great. That's great advice, Mary Beth Perry McRae. Thank you. It is like morning and death. It's horrible. I feel like I'm just getting by. Colleen A. Bushnell, that's encoded on the primitive brain. That's tough. Yes, because it's fight or flight. So a woman just posted this horrible post on Facebook that she went to her daughter's uh, volleyball game. And it was just sitting there. Didn't say anything. The daughter saw her, got very upset, talked to the coach, and the coach called the cops on her for watching her daughter from afar at a volleyball game. 
And the daughter panicked because she's been taught that her mother is so evil. And by that, she's also been taught that half of her is evil, that she had to call the police. Helene Bushnell, uh, wow, you were kidnapped? What was that like? No, 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 I was never kidnapped. And the person I was talking about, he was accused of kidnapping his daughter, um, but she wasn't. But that's what the mother used to make her hate her father. Her father was a kidnapper. Someone called Will Smith said MAGA. I don't know what that is. Um, Casey Zion, the judge said I talked about my ex like he was a Superman at Constellation on September 4th, and I got only my six people allowed to see me. Now I just paid, and I'm set to go to trial with a new judge to try to get 13, 14 year olds. Been removed because of false allegations of mental abuse. Well, that's great. So that shows by talking, by, by showing that you are the bigger person, mirroring what the change that you want your ex to do. It, it creates not only a positive influence for your child, but also a positive influence um, in your case, possibly. Because people see you as the bigger person. People pick up on this. And your children pick up on this. So I think it's very important to always say, well, I, if I want my ex to treat me like in this way, that's how I'm going to treat my ex as hard that that is but you can't ask someone to do something that you can't do that was just my cat who just jumped on there kathy wood will the film touch on any situations where the kids were late teens when alienated people tend to think only little kids can be brainwashed uh yes two to three stories are late teens and you're right, it's, it's actually easier for teens because they can begin to make these decisions of, well, if I align myself with dad, I get more money for college and a car. Um, and they can understand this double discourse, whereas the little kids, when they're questioned by anyone who's remotely competent, and there's a lot of incompetent professionals out there, you know, they'll say, why, do you want to see dad? And we have a video of this of a four-year-old in the film. No, I don't want to see dad. Why? Ah, I know, because I know, because they don't have a reason. Or they'll say stuff like, I don't want to see dad. Why? Because mommy told me to. Can I go now? You know, and they're, they're, just, they're just unable to this double discourse. Or they don't believe it, or, and they just feel stressed about it. But older children, also what I found, too, is that it's not like the brainwashing is, um, for example, your mom sexually molested you and poisoned you. It can be as subtle as, oh, you're going to go see your mom? <sighs> that must be stressful. She can be really annoying, huh? Oh, yeah, it's so annoying to go see her, right? It's so much packing and you miss out with your friends. It can be very subtle. Or every time there's an exchange, there's a fight, and kids are like, I just don't want to deal with this. I have my own stuff going on. And I think sometimes we forget this, especially as kids get older. The role of the parent gets smaller. And who they're dating or like in school or their grades can be much important, more important than the family, right? And this is normal and healthy. So if this becomes a stress point, they're like, just easier not to deal with the stress. Uh, Mary Beth Perry McCray, McCrary, sorry. My son doesn't want me in his baseball games because he is worried that there will be an issue with me and his dad. So I haven't seen him play. It's his first year playing JV ball as a freshman. Kills me. Um, I am a firm believer in going and showing up and being very polite. And if you want, you can go to his coach beforehand and just, you know, and, and just say, look, I'm his mom. I wanted to introduce myself. And um, I'm very excited that he's playing JV baseball. And I want to know I'm here to help the team. And don't, and don't get into anything about, you know, the divorce or anything messy. And just introduce yourself and say, you know, um, just so you know, me and my husband, ex-husband, we don't communicate very well. And I'm very excited to be here. So if I ever miss a baseball game, it's because my ex-husband doesn't let me know. But here's my number and email. I'd love to know more. And um, maybe the day of the game. Now, a lot of these tips I give do require money so if you don't um have a lot of money you know this might not work 
can you get all of the kids sandwiches for the game or hot dogs or whatever it is I, I you know like or something as some sort of treat for them or pastries or something like that um, or buy the Gatorade or something let the coach know but don't tell your kid don't put a sign up that it's from you find a way to support and then you build goodwill with the school. And we've talked about this in the other chats of just being there without an expectation that you're gonna meet your kid or talk to your kid, but just becoming a positive presence at the school. And it helps build allies because you're just seen as this great parent who's helping out as much as you can. Uh, Melissa Jean Jacobs, my kids are 20 and 25 and not speak to me after being kept from them. I'm so sorry. Um, Kathy Woods, plus the courts just leave it to a team to decide. Yes, we talk about how kids as young as 13 can decide in the film raising family and how unfortunate and tragic that is. Um, Melissa Jean Jacobs, and now my 24 year old is keeping my granddaughter away just like what she went through. Wow, I'm so sorry to hear that. And I think what's very important is. Um, just to remember that, always ask yourself what's effective and what you can do better, but not to blame yourself and not to blame your child for this. So um, I wanna see if there's any other questions before we start wrapping it up. And um, let's, let's do something before we close. So um, let's see, hold on one second. I want everybody to share this video right now on their timeline and to any group that will help that is about this. So I'm gonna share this just in case just in case you can find a way to share this because it's a little hard. So share. So now I'm gonna show the video URL. Let's all take a moment and can everybody share this? It's right there, I just copied it. Can everybody share this video on their Facebook page or on a group that deals with this? So when, you, when you've closed, when you've shared it, give me a thumbs up or just type in that you've shared it. So let's let's take 30 seconds and just everybody I just posted the link and I'll get back to your questions if anyone can share this on your page. So Tina Barone, have you shared this? Rebecca Hogan, have you shared the video? Amy Yates Malone, have you shared the video? Melissa Jean Jacob shared, yay. Casey Zion, have you shared? Melissa Jean Jacobs, have you shared? Rick Tobin, have you shared? Kathy Wood, have you shared? Mary Beth Perio McCary, have you shared? Colleen Bushnell, have you shared? So everyone, this is this is John Lindbergh, have you shared? Louis Jimmy Cajones, oh I remember you. You were uh, Louis Cajones, you shared one of the first uh, pictures of the Erase family with us. Thank you so much. Alvin Serrano, have you shared? So Casey Zion shared, Rick Tobin shared, Diane Doni shared, the video or the link. So if you share that link, you're sharing the video. Samantha Smith Dunn, Lori Tuig, I need to watch it first. Great, you're watching it now, but you can definitely share it later. And remember, if you can't watch this video now or you wanna watch it again, it'll be available tomorrow at erasingfamily.org under resources. It's also gonna be available five minutes later under videos on our Facebook page. Let me see if there's any other, um, Rebecca Hogan, let's see what she said. There was a question, so I'm looking for questions. So first from Tina Veroni, my grandson who was at the time was tend to ask me what is brainwashing? I explained to him that is when someone tells you something that isn't true over and over again until the person finally believes it. This is a few weeks before false allegations were made against us. I often wonder if you had an inkling to what was about to go down. So that's, so I think that's a good point. And I think what, what the next thing to say if someone asks what brainwashing is, is to 
ask them how do you judge if a statement is true if a statement matches up with it with um with you know with what they can observe so how can they discern and this is great in this era of false news if a statement is true or not how can they prove things and not just believe anything it's not just about you but about a news story i've seen crazy stuff shared on facebook and we need to educate our kids about this so having them have an open critical mind is very important the other thing is that if something is false is made about you instead of saying you know for example you never paid child support i have all the receipts start with more how does that make you feel to hear that because if you if they believe that something that you that you're a liar anything you say is just proof more that you're a liar so trying to get them out of it how does that make you feel that i that you were told that i never paid child support it makes me feel like you don't love you well i do love you and that's a better way to get a dialogue going then look at all the receipts for child support. Uh, Rebecca Hogan said, I unfortunately have a narcissistic mother who has slowly turned my oldest son against me. He is 20 years old. He won't speak to me. He won't even just say I love you back. I wish I saw the sign sooner. We used to be so close. I don't know what happened. It kills me. I'm so sorry, Rebecca. And this is very hard when it's going on and that's why having a third party get to them is more is more important um so i've seen some samantha smith going to court tomorrow and kids minor counsel and our parent coordinator is recommending i get full custody there's always hope there is hope samantha but remember the best custody is shared custody you can always parallel parent and this isn't about winning this is about making sure kids have a relation with both parents because even if the other parent is awful they're half of that, and they need to learn to interact with awful people in the world. And a parent, they need to learn to love and to protect themselves. But we need to help children develop in what's called an, equ an equanimous, I'm saying this wrong, mind, which means to observe something as it is and not to make a value judgment if it's good or bad. Trina Brown shared, thank you. Hey, Helen Hustle Sands shared, Cindy Wilson shared, Amy Etz Minor shared, Meredith Perio. Uh, McCrary, my daughter is 19, never wants to send my son messages or be involved in helping me because she said she doesn't want him to think he's choosing my side over his. She's my only link to him because she lives with me, but season two. What are your thoughts? So it can't be about choosing sides um, or coming over to my side. Can you get your daughter to move closer, not move closer physically, but to to do stuff with him and her father more. And then keep that link open, that relationship open. And if she doesn't feel safe, there's kind of nothing you can do. And it's sad. But always remind her, it's not about choosing a side. I want him to have a healthy relationship with his dad. I find that he lives with his dad. I find that he's closer to his dad than me. Um, but if you on his birthday can just deliver a gift and say, you know, mom loves you. And she's so proud of you and just want to let you know that, you know, I know you don't want to talk to her, uh, but she's always there for you if you need her. And she just wanted me to, to relay that. Um, her door is always open and she loves hearing about you because she's so proud of all the wonderful stuff you're doing and is always there. Um, or, you know, maybe your daughter can say, hey, mom and dad. I think we should do some counseling together, me and you, so we can learn how to deal with our crazy, messed up family. That could be an opening. Maybe not, but preserving that sibling tie in the long run is more important than her passing messages to you. And just make sure that your daughter never speaks ill of dad, never makes it about sides. So maybe it's extending an olive branch or maybe saying, you know, Hey, I know this is crazy. What if we all had um, Thanksgiving dinner together? Or what if we all celebrate your birthday together? What Are there any conditions or terms for that? Now, he, the, it's probably going to be said no, but it shows you're extending an olive branch But by how can we all get together better? So, we, wow, 14 more comments. Wow, you guys have a lot of questions. Rose, please share long before you were alive. Thank you. Hi, Michelle Jordan, one of our biggest supporters. Uh, David, I'm going to butcher your name. David Scola Miero. 
What words of encouragement will you give to a father of a now 20-year-old daughter who raised her for 12 years and hasn't had a contact in eight years and severely alienated after learning he was not the biological father? That's a tough one. Um, especially because when you learn that you're not the bi biological father, a lot of that impetus, well, you need to learn your origins and where you come from, I mean, that unfortunately can, can be lessened. I would, I would honestly connect with members of the LGBT community who are going through this and often don't have biological children and see how they're dealing with it and what tips they can give you. Um, that might be a good place to start and other dads in a similar situation who are not the biological father. And if there is a way to send something, you know, send her a gift and just that you love her, that uh, you know she has her father, uh, but you'd love to be her bonus dad and support her anyway. And that you have such fond memories and share a memory. You know, I remember when I taught you how to ride a bike. And I want you to know that I'm always here if you need me. And I'm so happy you're with your, you know, your biological dad and you're able to discover that because it's so important. Um, but I'm always here and I want to support you and not take anything away. And it's about expanding love. Wow, 18 comments. Whoa. <laughs> Angel Lynn shared, more than one member of my own family has been experiencing this. I haven't seen my niece in years. I'm so sorry. Jessica Tulze Vincent, I had to decide to let go. I fought for nine years, and for the sake of my own sanity, I had to decide to focus on what was working in my life. The pain can be all-consuming. I continue to pray for my kids all the time. Sometimes letting go is a way for things to come back. And by, and by working on yourself, because... And I always tell parents that my message is not keep on fighting until you die in court. Sometimes your advocacy can become a, a way of showing them that they love you. Being whole can be a way and healthy can be a way of preparing yourself to help them. Angel and parental alienation syndrome is real. Well, we want, we prefer to use the term parental alienation or being an erased parent. Um, sin, nobody uses syndrome anymore, just so you know. Um, Katyandra Angel, I've not seen my son for two years because of course in other family, how do I reconnect with my son? So well, that's what the whole video is talking about, which is that if you can't have any contact trying to send mental images, and if you can have a contact in some way, always keeping very positive about expanding love, not fighting, being the stress-free, loving parent, and, that, and over time hopefully they can see that. Um, and if you can get involved in the schools, uh, that is a great thing to do as a volunteer, but not as a way to see your child, but just to be there and to build positive goodwill with the school. And there is no magic solution. Davis going, I brought her home from the hospital, I am dad. So I think, so for, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the dad who said, um, I learned I'm not the biological father, by insisting, I am dad because I did this. I am dad because I did this. Your, your, your child says, wait a minute, now I have to choose who is my dad. This is stressful. I'm with my bio dad right now. I'm with my real dad, she probably would say. And you need to get over the hurt. And if you want to be in her life, accept it on her terms. So maybe she says, well, can I call you David or Uncle Dave or something? And that's painful and horrible, but you need to accept it on her terms. And the more you insist i am dad i am this the the less room there is so open a crack um can i be your bonus dad can i be like your stepdad can i just be like your your number one fan and if you want a relationship because th there are a lot of kids in the film we deal with two kids who are adopted by step parents so it's a little different situation and in one case you know the reunification happened before he started calling her mom again. So be open to that and let that flow naturally and not insist. The more you insist, the more they push back. The more you show up with just love, the more they are attracted to you. 
Um, it's unfortunately the same as in dating. If you're very insistent in calling the other person every day, saying how much you can't wait to get another date, they're probably like, whoa, crazy town. But if someone's like, yeah, I'd love to see you. Yeah, it'd be fun. You're attracted to that. Mary Stanley. I tried to talk to my former husband about possibly seeking family counseling. He agreed and said he would get back to me. That's four months ago. It's impossible to co-parent with someone who's determined to erase the other parent. And it's damaging to the erased parent to suggest getting together. It's better to accept, to accept our being erased and just move on. I think you should accept being erased, but if you can't, you can't move on from your children. And I don't think it, it, it works because there's always that psychic wound. And you can't co-parent, but you can parallel parent. You can... There are ways, and it is very hard to parallel parent with a very difficult person, and there are experts in this, um, like a Bill Eddy and other people who talk about how to deal with difficult people. Mary Stanley, how can an erased parent express love when they are completely erased? You can say to yourself, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. You can say it to yourself and send it out to your child, even if, if, if mentally you can do that. John Lindbergh, my mother's in hospice. My daughter has refused to see her. It's been seven years since anyone in my family has seen her. I emailed offering to pay, but as usual, no response. I'm so sorry. I understand that. Um, I refuse to say goodbye to my dying grandmother over the phone. Well, both of my, both of my dying grandmothers, I refuse to say goodbye to over the phone. So I understand that, and I regret that. Um, but there isn't much you can do at that point. Ashlyn joined. Hey, Ashlyn. Good to see you. Uh, Kendall Coleman, my daughter's all away at college nearby, and serendipitously, the dean of college has invited me to be a professor, so in a small way, I'm contributing to your life being beneficial. That's amazing. Uh, just be there and just be a professor that everybody likes, and don't try to track her down. Let other people be like, oh, Professor Coleman, she's such a cool professor. Um, my husband, who is such a great father by children who live with us, unfortunately, the other four biological daughters who don't live with us have basically cut ties to their mother's rhetoric. We want them to understand our home is their home. But we don't get to be their lives because their mother's creates hate and hurdles. It's truly heartbreaking. Katyandra Angel, I tried doing this. The school will not give me any info because dad will not put me on the papers, the medical files. I'm not on either. So, um, you do have rights under the law as a parent to access medical and um, educational files, and um, the school is violating your right. Um, I am not one to recommend lawyering up, um, but this could be something that a lawyer could write to the schools and the doctors citing the case law. Um, you might be able to find someone to do this at a reduced rate or pro bono because it's writing a letter saying, hi, I'm the biological mother, this is the birth certificate, and under federal law, blah, 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 I have a right to access the school records unless there's a court order saying that you don't have the right to do that um, or that your parental rights have been terminated. Mary Stanley, I'm a race, I cannot parallel parent. I got it, yeah. Um, Ashlyn Lerner, Ashlyn's one of the uh, protagonists of our film. Great to see you, Ginger. I love what you said about putting that energy out into the universe. It's incredible how much the butterfly effect of positivity does. Um, so Ashlyn reunited with her dad at the age of 18 and then moved in with him at the age of 19. And um, I would say, Ashlyn, correct me if you're wrong, uh, your, your, uh, your family did try to erase your dad and convince you that you were bad, but you always had doubts. Um, about that and questioning and when you were able to see him you had a good time with him so I'm not sure if I would actually consider you brainwashed maybe you have a different take on this um, but I think what Ashlyn says is having that positive energy and being happy it's so much more important than being negative and it's very little but If all you can do is send good vibes, it's better than sending negative vibes, if that's all you got. And it's, it's a very hard thing to say. Um, right now, I'm going through a very tough time with a very close family member. And 
personally, we communication broke has broken down and we can't communicate. But the very least every day, I meditate and send him love. And I know that that's not the same as talking to him. And it's very different, but I know that at the very least, I am not focusing on my anger and hatred towards him. I'm sending him love. And it's preparing me for the time when I can talk to him. Jessica Tool say, Vincent, a healthy relationship where one where you're respected and treated well is so important during these times of being erased. We must not accept mistreatment, which is the case for me. I recently reconnected with my daughter. However, she's still being manipulated by the other parent who is ultimately still trying to control me. She was rude and disrespectful towards me, and that's why I chose to let it go. She's not ready, and it must come with age and growing up. I can't continue to be mistreated by everyone. It doesn't mean I, I love my kids less. It just means I love myself more than I did. So I completely understand Jessica, and hopefully you will be able to have a relationship. But it's fine except limits on behavior. But it's the same if, you know, the way I look at it, it's, it's when you have a toddler and they have a tantrum and you can't say, oh, God, I hate you because you're being unreasonable. You have to say, I love you. And sometimes you have to hug the kids so they can't hurt themselves. Sometimes you have to ignore the kid. And the worst thing to do is to give in and give them what they want, right? But it's like a it's like a toddler having a tantrum. Ashley Leonard, investing energy into positive things can rewire the way you see things. Very true. And this is coming from a kid who reunited with her dad. Um, it's very hard and never to give up hope. It's very hard and these are very difficult situations. And I've heard of parents who say they can't have their photos of their kids around their house. I think that's, if you need to take them down, do so. But if you, once a month you can spend five minutes just saying, I'm sending you love. I love you. I'm proud of you. I'm happy for you. I can't wait to see you. It's, it's better than saying, God damn it. My ex is such an asshole, you know, to put it in like very, you know, um, you know, um, things. So a few things be before we end, if there's any more comments, because we've almost going through an hour. So again, um, we, for those who are just joining to us, thank you to all of us who voted for the South. So first of all, sorry. Um, if you haven't shared this video on your timeline or a group that deals with this issue, I'm sharing the link right now. Please do so. Number one. Number two, we got into the South by Southwest conference, not film festival yet. And um, we're going to be giving you a talk about how families are using Facebook to badmouth their ex and try their divorces in the court of public opinion, but also how to reunite. Um, and we're hoping that social media technologists who design these platforms will better design them for families. And the other thing is that if um, I just got a you rock to drink. Oh, thank you. Neri Mendoza, hi from the Caribbean. Wow, that's so far away. Um, I wonder if there's anyone here from the UK. I know there's a lot of people from Canada or any other country. Um, I always love to see the people from all over the world. Um, and this is a universal issue. And then also, if you want to support the film and get a dedication to your kid in the film, please do so by November 5th. You can go to racingfamily.org. You can make a tax-deductible donation. You can become an ambassador for the film to help the film get shown. You can volunteer. We are looking for people who can do graphic design, people who can help with social media sharing. Uh, but you need to be in a good place to do so. So if you are too upset, um, then it's good that you focus on yourself first. We need help with legal stuff too. And also, uh, if you ever want to watch this video, you can always do so. Just go to videos on Facebook, or it will be on our website tomorrow to share under resources. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Lily Shire says, yay, South by Southwest. I'm going, look forward uh, to meeting you. Well, I hope you can make it to our talk. I'm going to send you the link. I do not, uh, I, do, I don't have a time yet, uh, but it should be very interesting. And 
it's, it's going to be bringing it to a different audience. So I always said the point of the film and our impact campaign is not to talk to more erased parents. So that's, of course, important. It's to talk to the people who've never heard of this issue before. Um, it's to talk to the kids who are erased. It's to talk to the professionals who aren't doing the work that they should be doing in reuniting families. Let me just see if there's any other comments. Um, Amanda McDonald, New Zealand. Uh, Hi, pal. Invited uh, Brooke Barone to join. Hi, Kelly. Kelly, I'd love to talk to you later. I might even reach out to you tomorrow um, via phone or text because um, I'd love to talk to you, Kelly. Brooke Barone, thanks, Kelly, for having me be part of this. So Brooke Barone and Kelly Gunn, if you guys join late because we're about to end the chat, this video will be available in like five minutes on Facebook under videos and we'll post it. And also tomorrow will be available on um, our web page. So thank you so much. Share this video, share the message. And remember, and this is such a hard thing to learn, um, you can't control what your ex says about you, the parent of your child says about you, but you can control how you react to it. You can control how you show up. You can control how you present yourself as an advocate. And this is very, very hard. And I did this chat because one of our biggest supporters said, why don't you talk about brainwashed kids? And I said to him, the reason why I don't do it more is because there is no easy solution and there's no magic bullet I can offer. Um, there are resources out there. There are things that you can try, um, but there's no magic phrase. And a lot of parents come to me saying, what can I do to prevent this or to turn it around? And I can say, these are some tips that work for other people and this is what I can share. But I really wish I could say, hire this therapist, hire this lawyer, use this phrase and boom. Um, you know, things will get better. But I don't have that phrase, and, and nobody does. But there are things that you can try, and taking care of yourself is so important. And also knowing that, you know, and I, people don't like to hear this news, but maybe we'll give you hope that sometimes people reunite after 40, 50 years of not talking to each other. It can happen. And with the film and, and changing the way the schools and the counselors and the courts deal to this is going to be a huge help because the less socially acceptable erasing a parent comes, the easier it's going to be for all of you to reunite. Because if society can send a strong message, and this starts with awareness and then goes to court reform and then goes to laws and goes to resources, we can help make sure this is the last generation of erased children and that they don't repeat the cycle. So I'm so happy um, that so many people have joined us. Well, I'm happy that you've joined us. I'm sad that everyone is being erased. Um, if nothing else, know that you're not alone, that this isn't a fault that you've done, but this is a, a confluence of the family court system, of society, of economic incentives, and of just this general trend of alienation in general, that we all feel alone and disconnected. And there's so many people out there who feel alone and hopeless, and they haven't gone through this, but they feel this pain of being alone. And um, always think about how you can send out love and help people, even if it's not your kids, as hard as that is. Have a good day. Thank you for the support. Um, thanks for all of us who voted by South By. To those of you who have supported the film financially, thank you so much. We're about to cross the finish line. And if you haven't already, um, Please support. You can make a text deductible donation at racingfilling.org. Over 545 people have done so. And if you know of anybody who can make a donation of $500 or more to the film, I am more than happy to talk to them on the phone or Skype, make a presentation about why this is so important and they do not have to be an erased parent. It can be a business or it can just be someone who cares about this issue because it impacts you or just someone who cares about children. So thank you so much. Um, I'm going to start trying to do these um, more um, in the future. I haven't done a few because we've been busy. But again, thank you so much. Remember, you can find this video and others at erasingfilling.org under resources. Bye.